31, let's take a look at example three. Uh, fractions are back, everybody's favorite. So we're gonna solve this inequality and then we will write the solution set up in interval notation. Now, if you're not a big fan of fractions, you can multiply every term in this inequality by the LCD and knock them out. We had talked about that method a few sections back. Whenever you have fractions in an equation, you can multiply by the LCD and knock the fractions out. Um, and you can do the same thing in an inequality. If you just had an expression, let's say they asked you to just simplify this, you couldn't multiply by an LCD because you have to multiply left and right by an LCD. If you just have the expression, you don't have a left side of an equation and a right side. So here you do have to get common denominators and add them and all of that shenanigans. But, but I digress. We do have an inequality, so we can multiply by an LCD. So in this case, between my three denominators of six, four, and three, my LCD is 12. So I'm gonna multiply 12 to each term in my linear inequality. So I'm gonna do 12 times negative 5 sixths of x will be less than or equal to 12 times 3 fourths plus 12 times 8 thirds x. Now I don't need to change the direction of my inequality because I multiplied by 12, which is a positive number. All right, so let's see what we have. Um, 12 divided by six is two. Two times negative five is negative 10. Negative 10 times x, negative 10 x. All right, less than or equal to, all right. Four goes into 12 three times, three times three is nine. Three goes into 12 four times, four times eight is 32, 32 times x, 32x. Right? And that looks a lot simpler to solve than all this fractional work. And let me tell you though, if you had wanted to subtract 8 thirds x from both sides and solve it that way, you totally could have, right? If you wanted to add 5, 6x over here but subtract the 3 fourths, that would work also. So those are totally viable options. It's just for me personally, even though I like fractions, I just like to knock them out with LCDs. It makes my life a little bit easier. All right, now again, for most of you, I think you would subtract 32x from both sides, which is great, but for me personally, I like positively coefficients, so I'm gonna go rogue, and I'm gonna add 10x to both sides and subtract nine. So when I go to simplify this, I'm looking at negative nine is less than or equal to 42x. Okay, and again, I like to have my variables on the left side, so I wanna move the 42x over here and the negative nine over here. And when you switch the sides, or switch the terms on the sides, you also need to change the direction. Oops, that barely looks like one. You need to change the direction of the inequality. Okay, so let me move this over here so we're taking a look at it. So now I have 42x has to be greater than or equal to negative nine. I'm gonna divide by 42 because I'm dividing by a positive number, I don't need to change the direction of my inequality. I've got negative nine over 42, but I'm a little suspicious. Those are at least divisible by three. So they have a greatest common factor. This would be negative three over 14. All right, so really in interval form, my answer is X is greater than or equal to negative three over 14. Now, I wanna show you something. All right, let's say you had a fraction, and what was our original fraction? Negative nine over 42. If you enter that into your calculator, here's a little math magic that is an amazing little button to know. All right, let's see if we can get it in view. Now, if you didn't notice that you could simplify it, no problem. If you hit your math key, right, which is underneath this alpha, hit math, and then this first option here says convert it to a fraction. So I'm gonna hit enter, or you can type in the number one, but hit enter. And you'll see on your calculator, it says, I'm gonna take your previous answer, which was this thing, and I'm gonna convert it to a fraction. Now I'm gonna hit enter again. And when I hit enter, you see that it actually tells me the reduced form of negative three over 14. So let me just replay that for you, okay? So we can see it. I'm gonna start from the beginning. If I had negative nine over 42, I'm hitting enter. You can't see me hitting enter, but it's that bottom right key, enter. And then I hit math, and then I hit enter, and enter. It'll convert it for me. It's awesome. All right, so we've got that interval answer, but 
the directions say give the solution set in interval notation. Now I'm going to write this up as a graph just so we can start to connect these ideas. You, you don't have to do this every time. I just want to make sure that we're connecting inequalities to graphs, to interval notation. So if I had my x-axis and I was at negative 3 fourteenths, I would put a closed dot because of the greater than or equal to, specifically the equals to is what I want to include, and I would shade to the right. And I know when I shade all the way to the right, oops, let me remove that x because it's in my way, I'll put the x here, that is positive infinity. So when I go to write this in, in interval notation, I know my low is negative 3 fourteenths, my high is infinity, infinities always get parentheses, negative 3 fourteenths, because I want to include that, I'm going to put my bracket, okay? And that is my answer. So really, I should put the therefore here, because that is my answer. That is the solution in interval notation. All right, so when we move on to examples four and five, we're going to try three-part inequalities. I'll see you in a few. Bye.